My heart has become capable of every form. It is a pasture for gazelles and a convent for a Christian monks, and a temple for idols and the pilgrims' cup, and the tables of the Torah and the book of the Quran. I follow the religion of love. Whatever way love's camels take, that is my religion and my faith. The poem is always quoted to show that Ibn Arabi is inclusive and open to in accepting the truth of other religions, which means that Ibn Arabi as a pious Muslim grasps religions other than Islam have their own internal truth also. As a matter of fact, the subject is so difficult to simplify just by quoting the fragments of the poem. Let's begin a long investigation to particularly dissect this subject. First of all, so far as religion claims its own internal truth, it can be justified. But if the truth is one, can every religion declare to be the truth itself? Let's investigate from where the emergence of many religions came, not historically and culturally, but ontologically in the typical view of Ibn Arabi. Ibn Arabi starts, God himself is the first problem of diversity that has become manifest in the cosmos. The first thing that each existent thing looks upon is the cause of its own existence. In itself, each thing knows that it was not, and that it then came to be through temporal origination. However, in this coming to be, the disposition of the existent things are diverse. Hence, they have diverse opinions about the identity of the cause that puts them into existence. Therefore, Al-Haq is the first problem of diversity in the cosmos. The diversity of religions itself in Ibn Arabi's view is nothing but the effect of the self-manifestation of God or the Tajalli of Al-Haq. Ontologically, the Tajalli is the chief factor of the diversity of religions, so in this specific context, we cannot state that the existence of religious diversity is only due to the interpretation of each messenger of God. It is important to emphasize that a follower of one religion, first of all, can never negate a follower of another religion because from Ibn Arabi's perspective, that other religion is also the effect of the Tajalli of Al-Haq. Instead of viewing the diversity of beliefs to be disease and to be obliterated from earth, Ibn Arabi perceives the difference and the diversity to be a blessing of Al-Haq. He maintains, Because God is the root of all the diversity of beliefs in the cosmos, and because he has brought about the existence of everything in the cosmos in a constitution not possessed by anything else, everyone will end up with mercy. It turns out, discussing this issue, we must deal with the key concept of Ibn Arabi's view, that is Tajalli. So the Tajalli of Al-Haq here is a fundamental factor that causes the diversity of beliefs in the cosmos. In addition, we shouldn't also forget that the entire constellation of Tajalli is related to the preparedness of every entity, in particular, human being. It means that each human being has his own preparedness in responding to the Tajalli of Al-Haq. In the Quran, it is stated, He said, Our Lord is He who gives everything the form of its creation, then guides it. Thus, the particular preparedness of each individual al al depends on the universal preparedness al al or eternal preparedness al al azali that already exists in permanent entities this individual preparedness becomes the subject of determining how or in what form he perceives or imagines his God. Besides the preparedness of the individual to be the determining subject, the object faced by each individual is the Tajali of Al-Haq, which, as we have discussed, is infinite and has no end. These two things are explained by Ibn Arabi as follows. It is none other than God who bestows on the heart its predisposition in accordance with his saying, he gives everything the form of its creation. Then he raises the veil between himself and the servant, and the servant sees him in the form of his belief. Indeed, he is the very contents of the belief. 
Thus, neither the heart nor the eye of the heart sees anything but the form of its belief concerning al-haq. It is al-haq contained in the belief whose form the heart implies. It is al-haq that manifests himself to the heart, hence it recognizes him. Thus, the eye sees only the critical God. Whilst evidently there are many beliefs that whosoever restricts him to his belief denies him in other beliefs, affirming his tajali in the belief to which he restricts him. Whoever considers al haq without restriction does not deny him, affirming him in every form he manifests himself and devoting himself to the endless forms in which he is manifest. For the forms of his tajali have no end. Viewed from the side of Al-Haq, the diversity of religions is the effect of the self-manifestation of Al-Haq, whereas viewed from the perspective of each individual, the diversity is nothing but a response to his particular preparedness in apprehending Al-Haq, which is in his preparedness Al-Haq manifests himself. In other words, each individual's preparedness as the locus of the Tajali of Al-Haq plays a fundamental role in constraining or rather giving shape to the Tajali of Al-Haq. We must remember the statements of the 10th century Sufi Sheikh Junat al-Baghdadi. The color of the water is the color of its vessel. Put simply, every religion colors how or in what form Al-Haq manifests himself. Ibn Arabi in this case explains Tajali in the context of the different teachings or Sharia approached by the messengers. The Sharia referred to here is the path in any religion that leads a person to arrive at Al-Haq. It is known that the Sharia of each messenger of God is different. This difference is due to the difference of the Tajali of Al-Haq. The difference of the Tajali is caused by the differences of divine relations. Anisabul Ilahiyah. Thus, a people of a certain prophet have that divine relation that is not the same as a people of other prophets. The difference of these relations is due to the different interactions between the Tajali of Al Haq and individual preparedness. This interaction produces a form of creed which, of course, accords with the Tajali of Al Haq itself. Regarding the self-manifestation of Al-Haq or Tajali, Ibn Arabi always likes to quote Junat al-Baghdadi's expression that the color of the water is the color of its vessel. In relation to the religious diversity, it can be said that each religion is a separate color of vessel different from the color of other vessels. Nonetheless, it is significant to bear in mind that each of these different vessels contains the same water. Moreover, when the water is in the vessel, the water becomes colored, which inevitably produces a different color from the other vessels, inasmuch as the color of each vessel is definitely distinct. Thus, there are some religions that may be monochrome or have colors that look turbid, some look bright enough, some very bright, and so on. In this regard, each vessel teaches the contents of its own color, showing the path to the ultimate reality. Hence, every religion becomes a path for its followers to reach the ultimate reality. Hussein Nasser asserts, any integral religion must offer its followers not only guidance for a righteous life in this world and the hope of the beatific vision in the next, but also the means of attaining that vision in this life for those who aspire to intimacy with God while still in this world. In the Quran, the term path in the context of the path taken by humans to the ultimate reality has various expressions inter alia, shir'a, mansak, Toriko, sabil, and shirot. In terms of tajalli, each path is a self-manifestation of al-haq. Hence, Ibn Arabi considers if a naturalist believes the supreme truth is nature itself, then God manifests himself to that naturalist in the form of nature. That is how God manifests himself according to the creed of each person, and the creed in this context becomes a path from him to reach God. In the Quran, it is stated, Thee we worship, and from thee we seek help. Get us upon the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast blessed, not of those who incur wrath, nor of those who are astray. In this respect, Nasser explains, the straight path concerns our basic relation as human beings to God. The idea of the straight path, Asura Tal Mustaqim, is so central to Muslims that they identify Islam as the religion of the straight path. 
Ibn Arabi divides the path to God in light of Al-Amr At-Takwini, the existentiating command, and Al-Amr At-Taklifi, the imposing command. In the light of the existentiating command, all paths or all religions as paths to God are the straight path. Since indeed all these paths lead all followers of all religions to the ultimate reality, and since the ultimate reality is the end of all paths, so in the existentiating command, there are many straight paths to God. This was also asserted by the 11th century Sufi Abu Said Abu Khair when asked how many ways there are from creation to God. Abu Said replied, according to one account, there are a thousand ways. According to another, there are as many as there are particles in existence. Many Sufis maintain that the path to God is as much as the breathing of his creatures. In this context, in Ibn Arabi's view of the existentiating command, there are not any paths that are not straight. All paths are the straight path. However, Ibn Arabi takes a firm stance when explaining the path to God in the light of the imposing command. In light of the imposing command, in general, there are five paths Ibn Arabi considers to be the straight path. The five paths are Suratullah, the path of God, Suratul Aizah, the noble path, Suratul Rabb, the path of the Lord, Suratul Ni'am, the path of favor, and Suratul Khos, the special path. The first four paths will be discussed in detail another time. The last path, the special path, refers to the path brought by the Prophet Muhammad with the Quran and its comprehensive Sharia. In this record, Ibn Arabi speaks as a Muslim and in the context of affirming Islamic theology. According to him, because the Prophet Muhammad is the Imam or leader of the Prophets and Messengers and because his prophetic message generally closes other messages both outwardly and inwardly, the special path of the Prophet Muhammad abolishes or annuls other sharias or other paths. In Ibn Arabi's own words, he cannot devote himself except to the path of the Prophet Muhammad nor can he direct his followers except by serving in that special path. The path of the Prophet bears all the qualities that existed in the previous paths because the Sharia is general. Therefore, the Sharia of the Prophet Muhammad encompasses all previous Sharias. But all of the previous Sharias don't encompass the Sharia of the Prophet Muhammad. Although there is annulments, nasakh, of the other Sharias, according to Ibn Arabi, the annulments doesn't invalidate all contents of the previous Sharias. Nonetheless, with reference to a verse in the Quran, This day I have perfected for you your religion, and completed my blessing upon you, and have approved for you as a religion, submission, Islam. Ibn Arabi still insists that Islam is the perfect religion. The perfection of Islam is analogized by him with the light of the sun amongst the lights of other stars. In relation to the annulments of the Sharia of other religions, this analogy shows that the lights of stars other than the sun still exist. Even though we know that when viewed from the earth during the day with the naked eye, the light of the sun makes the lights of the other stars seem disappear. In relation to the paths to God, Ibn Arabi explains that although it is undeniable that many paths and all of them will lead to the ultimate reality, there is only one best path Ibn Arabi calls the path of happiness, Atoriku Sa'ata. That is the path laid out by the Prophet Muhammad. While the other paths, even though inevitably leading to reach the ultimate reality, according to Ibn Arabi, are full of intricacies, obstacles, or suffering. Then, in Ibn Arabi's view, in where exactly is the unity of religion? This unity can be referred to the unity of the essence of the self-manifestation of God, which can then be reduced to, first, the unity of the end. As we discussed earlier, all paths despite the fact that many and different have the same end. Second, the unity of the Sharia or the path. It is clear that the unity of the Sharia rests on the same Sharia giving source. The path or Sharia originates from and ends in him. Ibn Arabi calls this kind of path Torikul Umam, which is nothing but the one straight path, Torik al Wahid al Mustaqim. This path is shared by all followers of different religions. Ibn Arabi's commentator, Abu Ala Afifi, calls this path the path of Wahdatul Wujud and the path of Wahdatul Ma'bud, unity of the worshipped. 
This is clear if we trace the chief teaching of Ibn Arabi itself that the only wujud or being is Al Haq, who is worshipped by the followers of any religion. Since the only wujud is Al Haq, all the paths taken by the followers of any religion, be it monotheism, polytheism, henotheism, etc., viewed from this particular perspective, are nothing but expressions of the journey to the ultimate reality. Thus, according to Ibn Arabi, there is not any associate to God as he meticulously expounds it. The wisdom of his advice lies in forbidding him from attributing associates to God, for attributing associates to him is a great evil. This evil refers to God's state of unity because it describes him as divided into parts while he is one essence. And this is the utmost ignorance because his essence is his only associate. The reason for this is that the person who does not possess the knowledge of things as they really are and of their reality does not know that when the essence appears to him in different forms, this difference goes back to one essence. Hence, he makes each form an associate of the essence and each form becomes a part of this essence. However, it is well known regarding an associate that what distinguishes it from that with which it is an associate is not the essence of another associate because the other is distinguished by something else. As a result, really, there is no associate since amongst the things of which we say there are associates, each associate has distinguishing elements of its own. The reason for this view is a general association. Even if it is general, the ability of each associate to freely act cancels its generality. So, in Ibn Arabi's view, a verse in the Quran that compels thy Lord decrees that you worship none but him does not mean that we must not worship anything other than him, but rather that whatever we worship, be aware that it is him. Put simply, we never worship anything other than him, for the only wujud is he, nothing else. So, what can we conclude from this discussion on this topic? And actually, in which standpoint is Ibn Arabi? I'll be waiting for you in the comment.